to some extent at the beginning I think it was a bit surprising for us that we were playing concerts and you know like the last time we played in Italy when we were in Florence and you saw it was like the audience went crazy it was just, it was such an incredible feeling um, <coughs> but but at the end of the day I think we're all aware of this on some level that we we don't try to make you know very difficult music that thing with things being déjà vu or whatever it's really just we're very um, when we're writing we're very theory oriented in some ways where it's always you know this can't be too dissonant things need to be harmonious to a certain extent we want things to build in a certain way um, and at some point we start trying to build an image right that we see in our heads for the song um, and let's say the song is happening this is going to sound really cheesy but let's say the song is happening in a certain valley um, and there's a green color so it'll lend itself to a certain kind of chord progression, to a certain kind of motif, to a certain kind of instrumentation, um, which for us is understandable, and I think that that resonates. That it's not really a, it's not about emulating certain things as much as it is to sort of sometimes um, use you know pastiche um, to reference certain kinds of moods, um, to reference other people's experiments with certain moods. Obviously, we're not like plagiarizing or anything. Like we won't take a Beatles song and say this sounded romantic so we're going to play it the way it is no not at all but we'll use similar kinds of um of chord intervals let's say but not the actual chords um then again there's so much that you can learn from a lot of artists there's a whole library a huge library of music that has been written i mean since the beginning of like music up until now from classical music to contemporary pop music or folk or rock and we've all had like our influences and we try to at certain points to dissect certain songs that we like and see what it is, about what it is and what's the secret about that song and what is it that really works and maybe when we were starting in the beginning like in the first album we weren't we didn't really know like what was this thing that makes people kind of uh, enjoy our music uh, or react to it in a certain way and but more and more with the second album with the third album we kind of started realizing that there are certain things that work in songs or in performance or sometimes I mean even like live we perform certain songs in a different way because if, we, if we're going to perform it the way that it's recorded it's not it going to well. have the same uh, reaction or emotional reaction from people so we change things around For sure. every once in a while. Spending six seven years together we've uh, become more familiar to each other and what each and every one of us uh, likes musically or uh, is interested in. I mean, we at this point we share a lot of music uh, together. If let's say Carl is listening to something, he wants us to listen to it as well. Or if Hamid just discovered this new band, he wants us to listen to it. And it works this way. We kind of uh, we're more or less listening to a lot of things, but the same things as well. Um. To some extent, we're very different people, um, and I, I do see that all the time when we're when we're writing. That um, we each have certain kinds of comfort zones, certain aesthetics that we think are ideal that are quite different. Um, like sometimes I'll do stuff with my voice that everyone else thinks is too um, sort of Arabic, um, and I think a big part of that does have to do with my upbringing. That I was, you know, brought up Muslim. That I was listening to a lot of Quran. Um, you know, in my neighborhood, it's there five times a day. Um, but at the same time, it's like it's like the difference between when you're in your house and when you go to, let's say, a black tie party where everyone's wearing a suit with a bow tie. Um, and when we're in the music room or when we're around each other, we're actually just a very particular version of ourselves that, that happens seven years into knowing people and spending this much time with them, um, that we bring out certain things in each other and we, we are a lot like each other at the same time, but it's just like the original reference point is a bit different, but we all come into sort of variations of the same thing. Um, and I see that, I, I do still see that in the music, I do still see that in the kind of vocals that I do, or the kind of violin, violin lines that you do, or the, you know, everything else, mm -hmm. like the, kind of, the kind of aesthetic that we each push for. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a back and forth thing, right? Because none of us really get into the music room and say, okay, now I'm going to be a, a Muslim with my voice, or I'm going to be an Armenian with my violin, or it's not like that, right? It's just, we're playing our instruments, and we... No, it's a, it's a very complicated thing, right? Um, there is this thing where there's a history, for example, of 
you know, the Western media simplifying the Middle East and the Arab world and trying to come up with very, you know, reductive understandings of what the Arab world is, which is very funny, especially with us, for example, this idea that we're the voice of the Arab Spring or something like that is very strange. Uh, the Arab Spring is super complicated. You can't pick one band and say, you know, journalists uh, like represent uh, everything. So, yeah. um, especially for the Arab world, though, like it doesn't really happen where someone goes up to, uh, let's say, Beyonce, not that we're anywhere near as famous, and says, uh, you represent America. It's not like that. Um, this happens to, you know, this doesn't happen to white people, this doesn't happen to Europeans, this doesn't happen to Americans. Um, this happens to, you know, the other. Um, which, is, which is strange, and it's, to a certain extent, it's very uncomfortable. But at the same time, I think it's important for us that, that you know, we're also quite grateful for it because like, we do think it's very important that people start seeing another side of the story that there's, you know, we're not, we're not the only five people in the Middle East that are doing this. There's plenty of people. The majority of, I would say, the majority of Middle Easterns are fairly moderate, are not the versions of things that they see on TV. The majority of Muslims even are not, you know, uh, bearded and trying to blow things up. That's not the way the world works. Um, so it is, it, is, it is important for us that people see this side of stuff, but it's also a bit strange that it becomes sort of this thing that falls on our shoulders that like speak for a region we, we can't. Um, we, we couldn't possibly do that. Yeah. I could answer this in a very sort of like pretentious way, but I'm gonna <laughs> try to not sound like that. Um, I don't think it's really possible to, especially with music, to not be a part of your culture. Um, things like, you know, music works, I think it was Edward Said that said this, that music is always at a tension with noise, right? It's like there's a spectrum and you have this thing that you define as noise and this thing that you define in music and there's this back and forth that happens, you know? Um, and how you define noise is very much of a cultural thing. This idea that you walk into a bar in Italy, the volume in the bar is different than it is in Beirut, the kind of street sounds that you hear, how much people use their horns, everything, all of that defines noise. Um, so you end up sort of relating to different kinds of music differently or understanding the relationship to noise differently. Um, it's also you know, sort of impossible to be completely removed from your culture and how you address anything. Um, we grew up in a certain time in a certain place with certain kinds of families. We read certain things, we watched certain things. All of these things define how you react to different stimuli. And music is, you know, when you're writing music, it's, it's, it's just an extension of being to a certain extent. You're, you're there and you're being in the world and, and making music because of how you are um, or how you be. Um, I think these things, uh, you know, they're, they're inescapable. It's, it's not possible to, to escape culture. Even when you're trying to resist it, you're still reacting to it and, and you're still being a product of it. In terms of changing things, I mean, I don't think it's just music. I think it's all art and all, you know, not even art, just people living in a city, um, people reacting to stuff like traffic lights or reacting to politics or reacting to anything ephemeral that happens in the street. All these things develop changes in, in group sensibilities in any culture. Um, so yeah, I do, I do think music is part of that, but I think even if I wasn't a musician, if we were businessmen or, or whatever it was, we'd still be affecting you know, our place and our time. Yeah.